Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our little corner surface analysis. My name is Dr. Lars and this is going to be a brief survey over our topic. We distinguish the properties of the volume of a sample, of the bulk of a sample, to the properties of its surface. The surface often has different physical and chemical properties than the bulk and these properties may be crucial for specific performance characteristics. Physical properties include morphology, structure, porosity, the number and the size of the pores, and the chemical properties include the chemical composition of the surface, the distribution of the elements and other chemical characteristics just as hydrophobicity or acidity. If we want to analyze these properties, we need surface-sensitive tools, surface-sensitive probes. Probes which represent only the outermost surface layers. These probes can be, for example, neutral particles that we bring to the surface in contact and analyze thereafter. Particles cannot penetrate very deeply into the surface and are therefore quite ideal as surface-sensitive probes. A very simple way to evaluate the surface with particles is measuring the contact angle. We place a liquid on a surface and investigate the geometry of the forming droplets. Here we see an example of a smart surface which is both hydrophobic or hydrophilic depending on temperature. At high temperature the surface is hydrophobic which can be seen on the right hand side of the picture. Water drops do not wet the surface. The contact angle is greater than 90 degrees. The left hand side of the picture shows the same surface at a lower temperature. The surface is now hydrophilic and the water droplets wet and penetrate the surface. Another simple method of surface investigation with particles is adsorption. We measure how many particles adsorb and how strong these particles are bonded to the surface. Evaluating the adsorption data, we are able to calculate the area and the porosity of the surface. This polymer membrane was examined by adsorption measurements. The number and size of its pores could be calculated. Another type of surface examination with particles is atomic force microscopy, AFM. This microscopy technique has been successfully developed in the past few decades. A very thin tip is moved over the surface and the force acting on the tip is measured. You kind of touch and stroke the surface and feel its response signal. The response signal can be used to build up an image of the morphology of the surface or of certain chemical properties. Here you can see the AFM picture of a block copolymer. And we can very well see the structure of the different polymer blocks. Upon application of an electric field, the blocks align significantly. By the way, this was taken from a bachelor work I supervised. Ions are also very surface sensitive probes. In secondary ion mass spectrometry, SIMS, SIMS, the surface is bombarded with primary ions, which erode only its uppermost atomic layers. This process is called sputtering. The spotted layer is now partly present as secondary ions and analyzed by mass spectrometry. While SIMS destroys part of the surface, this method is very mature and you can well control how many layers you erode. SIMS requires considerably more effort than the methods that we discussed before, because ultra-high vacuum is required. Charged particles like electrons and ions move in a controlled manner only in an airless chamber. And so mass spectroscopy works only in ultra-high vacuum. 
photons usually are not very surface sensitive probes because they penetrate generally very deeply into this mantle. However, a measuring geometry was developed which allows photons only to penetrate a few atomic layers of the sample, the so-called ATR geometry. ATR stands for attenuated total refraction. As the photons penetrate only a few nanometers into the sample, their analysis provides only information about these few nanometers. To operate, for example, infrared spectroscopy in ATR mode, we basically just need a crystal with a higher optical density than the sample. Many commercial IR devices can be easily converted for ATR measurements. This method is robust and requires no vacuum. Scanning spectroscopy is possible to provide chemical contrast images. Here you can see the electron micrograph of a copolymer of polycarbonate, PC, and polyethylene tetraphthalate, PET. This picture does not permit any information about which phase is which, and in fact we only see a weak contrast. By means of infrared spectroscopy in ATR mode, we can distinguish the O vibration bands of PC and PET clearly. And we may now visualize the polymer distribution from infrared scanning data. Here's an often quoted curve representing the penetration depth of electrons as a function of their energy. The curve shows an unexpected convex shape with a minimum. Electrons having an energy between 20 and 50 electron volts penetrate less than one nanometer into the surface. Here marked in blue. These electrons are therefore very surface sensitive probes. The classical way to investigate materials with electrons is electron microscopy, either in a transmissive mode or a backscattering mode. Electron microscopy can create very beautiful three dimensional looking pictures of a surface, which can be seen in the following examples. Here you see an SEM micrograph, SEM stands for scanning electron microscopy, of polymer particles which are grown on silica spheres. Here another example, a transmission electron micrograph of a block copolymer in which the structure of the polymer segments becomes visible very clearly. We can also use the photoelectric effect to obtain surface sensitive information. UV or X-ray photons interact with the surface and by analyzing the energy of the emitted photoelectrons we obtain information about the chemical structure of the surface. As the photoelectrons are emitted from a small sample depth, the method is surface sensitive. This method is either abbreviated by PS for photoelectron spectroscopy or by ESCA for electron spectroscopy for chemical analysis. Like any method that works with free electrons, ultra high vacuum is necessary here. The devices are usually rather large and costly. We can also reverse the EFCA process. We may shoot electrons at the surface and analyze the resulting photon. This is frequently done in many SEM microscopes. The technique is called electron microprobe analysis. EMPA or EPMA. The emitted characteristic X-rays of the surface elements are measured. In this example, polymer mixtures are analyzed by a microprobe. The emitted radiations clearly identify PVC as the chlorine-rich matrix. We summarize. The physical and chemical structure of a surface is important for many technical properties. If we want to examine the surface, we need surface sensitive probes such as particles or electrons. Adsorption and surface tension measurements are very simple methods. Scanning probe microscopy, ion mass spectrometry, electron microscopy, and photoelectron spectroscopy are more elaborate and complete the gamut of surface analysis tools. Thanks for watching.